Good morning. Good morning, ladies and some gentlemen. Good morning. Can I have your attention, please? I'm a mother of five. I know how to do this. <laughs> That's what happens at home, Oak. Everybody starts laughing. Okay, good morning uh, to you all. Um, I, uh, my name is Mona Keizer. Uh, I'm the State Secretary for Economic Affairs and Climate Policy. And I'm here today to introduce uh, a very important subject, subject and uh, that's um, how do we get um, more women in entrepreneurship. Um, I will sh share a few uh, points uh, with you and I will end with a point uh, for debate. Uh, we had a spontaneous uh, idea um, uh, together with the moderator, Simona. Um, I will be on the panel and that, will, that means that the moderator has, has to walk uh, and stroll uh, uh, up and down the podium. But I have to leave earlier because I have to attend another session. So I hope you forgive me. Um, small and medium-sized business is the OECD uh, outlook. Small and medium-sized enterprises are key actors for building more inclusive and sustainable growth, increasing economic resilience and improving social cohesion. That's confirmed by the OECD. Unfortunately, the OECD report about gender gaps shows us that startups with high potential and innovative ideas may face barriers to obtaining financing, scaling up, and succeeding. In particular, access to venture capital may be limited because of asymmetric information, policy barriers, or social norms, implying missed opportunities for growth, innovation, and job creation. Now, I'll skip a few cards because there is another important uh, report, and I'm not messing up the, everything because then, ah, there it is. There is also a McKinsey report, The Power of Parity. And uh, the McKinsey Global Institute published in 2018 a report about the value of more equality between men and women in the Dutch labor market. The report shows that the Netherlands has a high participation rate of women and that the step to the labor market is accessible for most women. At the same time, McKinsey clearly demonstrated that many women, even when they work, are not economically or financially independent. That is because uh, the most uh, women in uh, the Netherlands work part-time. 74% of women work less than 35 hours. And on average, Dutch women work 27 hours a week. And I always say uh, it's something that you should uh, decide together with your uh, spouse or partner or whoever you live with and take care of children with. But I always say to women, make sure that you um, keep participating in the labor market. Because when, thing goes, when things go south, then it's very difficult to return to the labor market. There's also a McKinsey report that stated that because of the lack of diversity in venture, uh, in venture capitalists, in boardrooms, in companies, uh, we miss out of economic opportunities. Uh, and um, it, it adds up to 1 billion euros. So it's very important that we are discussing uh, this here today. Um, then funding for women. Dutch research had sh has shown that investment funds seldom choose startups led by women. The investment funds studied um, gave funding to less than 2%. Yes, you hear it right. Less than 2% of startups led by women. And less than 7% of startups were mixed teams. This is partly due to unconscious bias and stereotyping. Um, a different study involving a network of women entrepreneurs also showed that women faced prejudice, faced prejudice from male investors. In the US, startups led by women clinched 4.4% of the deals. The amounts awarded to women were only half those awarded to men. Um, and the database of Crunchbase shows us that 83% of venture funding worldwide worldwide goes to ma male only teams. So it's very important that we discuss this today. Um, 
Together with uh, my uh, fellow minister, Ingrid van Engelshoven, I organized a roundtable with senior women executives last February. The organizations taking part expressed their commitment to this issue. They will use their position as role models to increase the public focus on this matter. And uh, this government also seeks to improve the position of women entrepreneurs. Um, for instance, by generating publicity for the issue. Uh, I, um, um, I also looked at the ratio of men to women in seven grant committees at the Ministry of Economic Affairs. So those are, these are the committees that grant funding to entrepreneurs. In total, and I was shocked, in total there are four women and thir 33 men in those committees. Yeah. But what can you do? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I always laugh. But it's actually bad. Um, um, if men vastly outnumber women, this also leads to grants mainly being awarded to companies led by men. Because it's, it's a sociological and maybe biological thing that you choose the thing that looks like you. And even we women, especially in the Netherlands, leadership is perceived a male thing. That's how we are uh, brought up. So I always say, it, it, I, I don't believe in saying, oh, you're bad. I don't believe in it. Because if you say to people they're bad, they will step back and won't be listening to you anymore. And that's why I uh, look at it from an economic point of, re f uh, economic point of view. And I say to uh, VCs and to uh, funding uh, committees, you are missing out economic opportunities. Um, what, am I, what do I do about it? Um, I'm, um, 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 my policy is to make sure that there are more women. And I can't wait for men to step down themselves. Because then maybe in a hundred year time, it will be different. And I don't have that uh, amount of patience. Um, I'd like, and I won't be there to see it, I think. I'd like to um, ask you to use your networks to encourage women to apply for funding to grow their business and introduce them to your networks to create opportunities. Uh, Constantine van Oranje, the special envoy of Startup Delta, that's the organization responsible, and it's called Tech Leap NL. Tech Leap NL. Oh. Yeah, you, you listened very carefully yesterday. Yeah. I exercised with the room what the new name was. I won't, it's too early now. Maybe, maybe later today, um, um, has said he will only take part in panels that include women. And I was so proud when he did so, because I'm, I'm, I'm a woman. I was born that way. So when, I'm, when I say it, then, then it won't help, because then I will be the only woman on, on, woman on the panel. But especially when a, a man like this in his position says that that helps a lot. More diversity will make our economy stronger. And uh, before I give you the point for debate, um, I want to say one thing. Uh, I turned 50 last year, and when I was younger, I, I always listened. So imagine, 20 years ago, who are you are around 30? 20 years ago, when this subject was brought up, I always thought, well, what's the problem? I don't have a problem. But now I'm 50 years old, and I look around me, and not in this room, but in other rooms, and I wonder, where are all the bright, intelligent, ambitious women that were around me in my 30s? So eventually, when you go along in your career, at a certain point, that you will look around you, and they all have disappeared. And again, it's not bad for you, bad that you made those decisions. It's a fact that we're missing out of economic opportunities. So the point for debate, due to a lack of diversity, we are missing out on economic opportunities. Well, I can't imagine that you don't agree, because I just stated a few reports. So the point for debate today is, and what are we going to do about it? Thank you very much. Does it work? Yes. Thank you very much for your inspiring uh, 
speech this morning. I think we have the most entrepreneurial minister here uh, uh, on stage. Uh, can I uh, invite the other panelists uh, on stage? So, um, good morning. Uh, my name is Simone Brummelhuis. Uh, um, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I had a company, I sold it to a US company and then I turned um, an investor, uh, run an angel fund. We, f we, f we uh, invest in uh, female entrepreneurs and I'm uh, 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 in the process of launching a much larger VC fund. Um, on our panel is uh, Christina, here, uh, Ajepi Ju, is that right? Yes, thank you. And Nitin, and our own state secretary. Um, and uh, I think it would be a great idea to start with this question. As we all know, um, female businesses uh, have less startup capital. And because they have less startup capital, they are actually less successful. So they are underfunded. That means they don't have enough uh, teams to uh, thrive and uh, a lot of women also have less work experience and that is also an issue. So we have to facilitate this access to capital, this team building and also this uh, experience. On the other hand, we all know, as we have just seen, if female, funded, female businesses get funded, then they are actually doing better than male uh, uh, companies. So this is the issue where, uh, in, in, in a nutshell, and uh, before uh, I want to have the audience think about that solution, you know, what can we do about this if we see this as an economic opportunity? It's, it is uh, indeed also an opportunity under the SDGs, uh, under G SDGs 5, equal opportunity access to capital, but it's most of the time um, an, an, an economic opportunity. So in the meantime, you can think a bit about the solutions that you have experienced or that you are busy with, and then I will ask ask the panel a little bit of what they think is, an exper is, a, is a solution to this uh, issue. So, uh, Christina, you have your own uh, mic. Uh, uh, tell a little bit who you are and what are your first thoughts on a solution to this issue? Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, my name is Christina Perkin Davison. I'm the co-founder and managing partner of iEurope Capital. It's a venture capital fund that invests in early stage companies in Central Eastern Europe and increasingly in the DAC region, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Uh, we invest uh, primarily in software as a service, uh, in IoT, loyalty, and also mobility, and increasingly in robotics. Uh, we have deployed about 75 million over several different funds and have increased uh, the value by about 230 million. Um, and uh, we are very proud of that. Uh, we also strive to be top quartile, fu top quartile fund. And uh, before that, uh, I was working at the Bankers Trust Company. What does that mean, top quartile fund? Uh, top quartile, it depends on which uh, vintage it is, but uh, basically two and a half times cash on cash returns, 35% uh, net IRR. Uh, those are the things that we strive for. Uh, especially, it depends on which emerging market you're talking about. Um, so before that, I uh, was at the Bankers Trust Company, and I worked on investment management and also in corporate finance. So I got a wide sort of variety of ex work experience. And I got to see a little bit about how financial markets worked in uh, the US. And increasingly, uh, as I worked on privatizations in Eastern Europe and corporate finance, I saw how things were transforming over there and got very excited about that. I, then afterwards, uh, I launched the fund with my business partners and we're based in Budapest. Um, there's many different things that I see uh, from the standpoint of a woman in venture capital as I moved along in those markets. In the beginning, I didn't have, you know, I didn't see any problem. But as I went along and I went to conferences where I ended up being one of the few women in the room, I thought, gosh, you know, that's really unusual. Um, and you can, you can talk about all the reports, you know, the, the latest IFC report that says that 7% uh, 
uh, is the number uh, where only 7% of women entrepreneurs, or, or, or rather, sorry, 7% of funding of all venture capital and private equity goes to women entrepreneurs globally. I think it was mentioned 2% before in the Netherlands, but that's globally, and that's really not enough. And the good news about that is the number can only go up, in my opinion. <laughs> so that's we have to be an optimist about that, right? It's, it's all only got to go up. And, and to understand um, the issue is really to understand the problem. And you were talking about the problem before, Minister. And I, I think that the, there are, in the, in the IFC report, uh, there are several different things. You mentioned that uh, recruitment uh, is from the venture capital fund or the private equity fund. Uh, that is primarily uh, from a, a cultural fit. They're looking for a cultural fit rather than expertise. And really what they should be looking for is expertise, right? You want to make sure that when you choose uh, people that you're, you're basing it on it, their experience and not just a cultural fit. But cultural fits seem to be the most important priority for a lot of VC firms. So, so what, and that's so, so. So what you mean with recruitment is on the assumption that if a venture capital firm has more women on the uh, decision making um, uh, bodies, that they invest in more women. Well, actually, uh, it's 2x. So women tend to invest uh, twice as much in entrepreneurs, and women partners. And that's the issue. Because there are a lot of women who are working at venture capital funds, but they're not at the partner level yet. And that's another issue. You know, They need to see women who are coming up into these, fu these funds, working their way up, they need to see role models. They need to see the opportunity is available. Because if they don't see a way that they can perhaps even have their family and work-life balance, if there isn't a way for them to do that, then why should they even pursue it? I mean, they're, they're not dumb. They're smart. So they're going to take the path of least resistance. OK, so that's one solution. It's in the firms itself, where there is an issue uh, of uh, uh, progress be of becoming a partner. Hi. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. My name is Kweju from Nigeria. I will be speaking from an entrepreneur point of view. Um, so in Nigeria, I run a social enterprise called Mother's Delivery Kits. What we do is we connect women in rural communities to the life-saving supplies they need at childbirth. Um, the supplies are basic supplies like the things like infant receiver, the scapel blades, the mucus extractor, things that are not easily accessible and affordable to women in rural communities where about 50 million women of childbearing ages live and work in Nigeria. I also recently started a second company called Giggles. We produce Nigeria's first instant baby cereal and uh, Nigeria's first non-therapeutic ready-to-eat meal for conflict and post-conflict areas in Nigeria. When I say that I will be speaking from an entrepreneur's point of view on this panel, this is what I mean. I downloaded the uh, matchmaking app. We know the matchmaking app. I downloaded that app about maybe about three weeks ago. I ran a social experiment. What did I do? I let the app match make me to investors. And I got about six of them. And I sent them a very nice, professional in my thoughts, email or messages using the app. The social experiment ended yesterday morning. <laughs> I did not get any feedback. So during lunch, just before um, lunch time, I met a friend of mine, a guy, an American, and we're talking about this over lunch. And I gave him the same message that I sent out. I started sending out three weeks ago. I gave it to him. Asked him to contact the same investors that I did. I gave it to him, and he sent this message is out just before lunch. And he got three meetings. <laughs> what does this say? Funding has a gender, and it is not female. That is simply what it is. The gender of funding is not female. It's harder 
when you're female. It's much more, like multiply that by 100 when you are an African female. Yeah. Now multiply by 200 when you're a female from Nigeria. <laughs> you, you know the Nigerian prince time, right? <laughs> but that is what this is about. So first solution for us, we need funding to be gender blind. Look at our expertise, our competence, what we have done in the past. Don't look at our gender. Don't look at the color of our skin. Don't look at the fact that we do not have British, American, Queens, whatever, Netherlands accent. No, we do not have it. <laughs> but boy, we do real hard work. We give you real returns on your investment. We just need you to trust us and make funding gender blind for us. Thanks very much. Nitin, you have a, a fund which focuses on women and focuses on um, African Americans? Yeah. Uh, minorities, African minorities? American, Latino, LGBTQ. Yeah. So um, my, uh, you know, my background is I'm an entrepreneur and I'm still an entrepreneur. Uh, I still own my 25 year old startup. And a lot of what I'm doing today really stems from my own personal experience as an Indian immigrant in Oregon where I face similar bias. I feel uh, similar sort of stereotyping that back 30 years ago, Indian en Indians were good engineers, but not good entrepreneurs or executives. So I took my Indianness and started my own business and created my own table. Um, and um, I was eventually successful in raising capital, and uh, I actually ended up buying my investors out. And about 10 years ago, I got involved with an organization called Thai. It stands for the Indus Entrepreneurs, but today we're the Inclusive Entrepreneurs. We're a global organization. We give back, we mentor entrepreneurs and invest. And we have very specific targets to helping women entrepreneurs worldwide. Uh, about four years ago, I got approached. Um, some of my early angel investments were in women-led companies. Uh, one of them exited a few years ago and we got 17X. So the narrative that women outperform guys is absolutely true, and I'm experiencing that in my own portfolio. So I launched two funds. Um, one is a public and private fund called Elevate Inclusive Fund. So the state of Oregon, the city of Portland, Multnomah County, city of Beaverton, these are all Oregon entities, public entities, allocated about 1.5 million. They were looking for a fund manager who would uh, invest specifically in women, people of color, minorities, LGBTQ in the Portland metro area. So we ended up creating a $3 million fund. Uh, 1.5 of that is from uh, private high net worth individuals. Many of them are Thai angels. The second fund, which was where where came the inspiration was, um, was a foundation called Meyer Memorial Trust. It's an $800 million foundation led by a lady by the name of Rukaya Adams. She's African American. She pulled me aside one day and said, let's talk. I want to talk about your next career move. It was Elevate Capital. So Elevate Capital is a $10 million fund. It isn't 100% isn't focused, but it's intentional. So we launched both of these funds uh, three years ago. We've deployed about $8 million. Uh, we already got one exit out. We paid off 70% of called capital. 60% um, of my uh, portfolio CEOs are women. One of them is here right here in the audience, Rita, Je Rita Hansen from Oregon. Um, and we've turned this whole narrative that there is not a pipeline completely up on its head. Because when you are intentional, and you speak to the women entrepreneurs and you say, I have money from you, for you, they come to you. So I don't have a pipeline issue. I have an oversized pipeline. I also don't just invest in technology entrepreneurs. So I have a diverse strategy because majority of the women that are coming to our fund have ideas that are from other sectors, other industries, and they too can get the 10x returns, and we're already seeing evidence of that in very early stage investments. As these women CEOs are able to raise their next round of funding, uh, we, we are seeing evidence of that, that you know, if you are, are supportive, you provide mentoring, which is what we do, um, you work with, uh, with these women entrepreneurs, you build them, give them the network, and you're there for them. You have to be in a supportive role. You can't tell them what to do. They, outperform, and that's the evidence that we built. And most of these companies, if you ask them what is the diversity of their employees, 50-50. So it's all possible if you are intentional. Thanks. So 
One of the things that you said which strikes me is that you are looking to companies which are which are in a different industry than um, uh, regular VC funds are looking at. Yeah. Is that what you say? We have, a, we have a diverse strategy. So we don't say no to companies like Rita, who has a clean tech business building these massive machineries. Um, we're able to support her, and she's able to raise capital. And, and yeah, the, these so are- So are you a catalyst also for other VC funds? Are you, yes. are you, bringing, are you uh, yes. convincing other VC Absolutely. funds because of your f f sort of uh, yeah. front runner role? Right. Uh, as, so uh, Portland, Portland has about four or five VC funds. Every fund has a woman partner yeah. or a venture partner. Everybody is chasing the 84% diversity uh, 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 you know, number that we have. Uh, there are two funds that are at 40% women and people of color. Everybody's after that because why? Because the funding agencies are demanding that and they're looking at us as inspiration and we're co investing. We co invest with each other. So now suddenly there is more access to capital. Uh, in 2016, uh, there's a female entrepreneur that we co led with another fund. She raised $3 million in about two weeks. Okay, so funding agency, that's government. Government and foundations and institutional funds. Okay, so um, uh, Mona, uh, can I call you Mona? Actually, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So hey, Dick. That, oh, sorry. That's my name. Huh? Um, the role of the government. Uh, it, it, what we talk about is here a funding agency who sets uh, a requirement to invest in women or. Uh, and, and, uh, the government who's, who is now supporting uh, women into these uh, grant uh, uh, commissions. Uh, what other things can we think about of the role of the government uh, in a sort of a broader perspective? Well, one of the th I, I, I strongly believe that it's, it's very important to make sure that there are men in the committees who decide. So that's, that, that's very important. Um, so that, that's what, what I'm aiming at, it's just like I said. And it's, it's all, and, and I, like I said, I don't believe in, in uh, because we've been doing that for, for 30 years now, saying that it's a bad thing and that you should be diverse and that everybody counts. Yes, of course, but it doesn't help telling people they're bad. What helps them, what helps is telling them what to do to um, make it, to turn it around in a positive way. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm looking at those committees, and um, and, and, and it, it will be it will be difficult because you have to ask men to step down. But it, 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 I say it's 2019. How is it possible that there are committees with only men in it? For centuries now, we've been 50-50, male female. So why is it still just a male uh, committee? So that's what I'm doing, and of course, talking about it. Um, so it's raising awareness. It's um, doing something about the partner structure in those VC firms. It's having a diverse strategy, having diverse grant committees, um, being uh, very transparent and open uh, uh, and uh, do this uh, and, and show that there is an unconscious bias. So these are a couple of these uh, solutions. Now I want to take it a little bit here in the audience. Who has uh, a, another solution or a similar experience that he wants to uh, share with, uh, with, with our panel and with uh, the audience on uh, the solutions? Okay, I see some hands here. Short, please. Uh, I agree with what everybody said and also... Oh, sorry, my name is Sukai Sise and I'm from uh, Royal Blue and Orange. Uh, similar things happened to me when I was raising funds. In the early stages, it was very hard to get any money. Anybody who was looking for females, tech, all of the diverse areas, you know, sometimes I fit the box and I knock on all the doors and it was difficult. The sol solution, I think, is to do what uh, Jacinda Arden in New, New Zealand has been doing. She's in a field where it's male dominated. She's not telling anybody you're bad. And she has recently risen above to show us all what she's doing. And I believe in her capacity of watch me do it. What did she do? 
she's leading her country and she's defining leadership and service leadership in a whole new capacity. She didn't tell any guy, hey, this is how you did it wrong and this is how I'm going to do it. When opportunity arose in New Zealand, she rose above and she showed the whole world what it's like to be human, what it's like to show decency and what it's also like to bring your citizens first. I didn't hear the name, Rap, and I know now who you, who you mean. Yeah. Thank you. You had a solution too. I had uh, more, of the, uh, more of the comment, but uh, my name is Andrea. I am from Prague, Czech Republic, and I'm a founding fa partner of a fund uh, which is investing into gender diverse companies in Central Europe. And um, we have 80% of the funds already fundraised, and it was like a journey for the past two years. And I don't know whether what you're saying is just like we need to have a female in the committees because we are basically fundraising and we managed to find a lot of like a male entrepreneurs that they supported the idea and the Czech Republic is not very good in a diversity, it's 94th in the world, so it's just like a very hard, but we also approached a lot of female entrepreneurs and we are really struggling, so like a, and there is a Harvard Business School study from 2010 that basically if a woman is asking for money is only 32% chance to get it. If there is men asking for money, it's a 68% chance. And if it's a good looking man, it's 80% chance. <laughs> so, so, but uh, but the, the thing is in the study that the female are actually discriminating the female, like uh, uh, nurses, exactly the same. And I think the reason for that is that the, the, the women are very much risk averse. They are not very much investors. They don't really, you know, they're afraid to, to invest into venture capital, private equity. So I think it's very much about like a, to, you know, like a also, and I don't know how to really approach it, but basically this like a female successful entrepreneurs, they maybe support the charities and non-foundation and do a lot of stuff, but they don't invest the money like a male entrepreneurs. And I think it's just, I don't know, maybe some sort of the education or. So education of exit entrepreneurs. Actually, we, this is the reason why in the Netherlands, we raised this first angel fund, which we have 75 female entrepreneurs. Half of them have sold their companies. They bought some real estate, they bought their Hermes back, and now they're investing in the next generation. But they do it together, and it's partly it's training. So training of female entrepreneurs who are need to invest in the next generation. Who, oh, there. Now, we have to be a little bit shorter on solutions, so we have to be a bit more snappy. Hello, I'm Zineb, I'm from Morocco, and I founded um, a mentoring NGO. So I think that uh, we should create networks and also mentoring um, communities or mentoring programs so that we give these female um, entrepreneurs the means and also the tools to sit at the table and to raise their hands, to ask for uh, for capital, and also to raise their self-awareness about their skills and their, and their abilities. Thank you. Thank you, that's very clear. So it has also to do with different measures in different stages of the company. So if you're early and you're not investor ready yet, then you need the whole mentoring, training, in order to get investor ready. So that's a solution too. Thanks, I'm Fran Pastori from the United States and I think we need to give little girls erector sets and not Barbie dolls and get little girls feeling really comfortable with money at a very, very early age so that it's okay to, uh, to um, want that Hermes bag and it's okay to learn how to invest and it's okay for us to want economic security and money. It is not just a male thing, but we have to change the dynamic from a very, very early age. Whoa. <laughs> I totally agree with you. I have two, I have three uh, daughters and uh, I don't know <laughs> how they are with money. <laughs> they keep asking me tickies. I don't know whether you know what it is, a ticky, but <laughs> if you are a mother, you know, here in the Netherlands, that means that they are broke. Hi, uh, Chantal Inen, entrepreneur. I started with two uh, angel investors, Mill. Um, I'm just wondering if we have to wait for the venture capitalists uh, to change and to see us and invest us in us. Why don't we create our own sort of sisterhood cooperation investment fund, you know, that we support each other. Look in the room, like it's mainly females. 
also maybe base it on female values. I don't know. Can, no, so can I just let's respond just to create that? something yeah. new? Uh, I'd yeah. love to respond to that because Very good. Yeah. what I've been really excited about is in the last three years, I've started to see angel networks popping up globally uh, of all women and women starting to invest locally uh, in their own markets. And that has been really incredible because I didn't see that. at Actually, that's really even in the last two years. So it does exist. And I think that that could be mobilized a little bit more effectively on a global basis. Thank you. Oh, God, there are so much hands. So uh, first, the reaction of the panel. They came all here to, for, to, to, to discuss with you the solutions. I know there are more solutions. We get to you. We still have half an hour. So, so in why don't you a, re a reaction from you from all these type of solutions? I, I think these are all great solutions. Uh, back to the erector set. I have two daughters. They're my inspiration. My older one, uh, just through osmosis, you know, participated in this Thai program. She's now the CEO of her own startup. Uh, as she graduates college, and this uh, this startup actually came out of our Thai program, educating high school students. So totally agree with you that that needs to happen early. Uh, with regard to the women networks in Oregon, and we're a small community, you know, we're like two million people, but the stuff that we're doing around diversity and inclusion is unbelievable, and we're seeing unbel unbelievable results. We actually have a fund called Women's Venture Fund, led by two women, and they're investing in diverse women-led startups. So I th it's all possible, and I totally agree with you that more women need to step up. I had the same challenge of, you know, I'd go to women entrepreneurs or high net worth women, even though my leads are too strong African-American women, um, I had a hard time convincing them to invest in the fund. I do have women investing, but they wouldn't. They were very conservative. And when, when I gave them a choice of the inclusive and the capital, they go to capital, they say inclusive is too risky. So it, it, that needs to change, and women have to step up to the plate and create their own networks, and they need men like me supporting them. You know, it's interesting. Um, I remember a lot of the pitch contests that I used to go to were all men. Yeah. And I was asking people in the audience, you know, who are entrepreneurs, well, why don't you get up there? Why don't you go pitch, you know, your your company? And they said, oh, you know, I probably won't win. You know, I won't, I won't get it. So I said, that's ridiculous. You've got to have, you know, an all all women pitch contest. And you know what? People were a little skeptical, but at the end, people showed up, and actually, people came out of the woodwork because they actually thought that they would then have a chance. So I think it's very, it's people are making calculations whether or not they're going to succeed in venture capital, whether they should go into that business, whether entrepreneurs should pitch or not. They make calculated risks, right? Whether they're, they're gonna try for it or not. Right. So that's self-confidence which needs to increase. So you have yes. Yeah, so comment. just um, just to add to what everyone has said, I would someone mentioned mentioned mentoring. I think that that is actually a good way to help young female entrepreneurs get out of their own shell and begin to access fund. So it's not enough to say when you share your own um, experience about how you have become successful. It's not enough to say oh it's hard work or it's God or or it's um, grit and determination. Yes, we know all those things. But show workings. Show us how you got to that point. Open up to us and let us know everything along the way. I mean, it is the only way that we can learn to stand on the shoulders of those who have walked that path so that we do not make the same mistakes that you have made and we do even better than you have done. I mean, it is about collaboration here and not competition. So, yeah, I mean, I know there are some hands. We started part having the audience participate as we continue doing that. Uh, hello. Um, hello. Should I stand up? Okay. Um, I'm Miriam Black. I am Ugandan. I'm the ambassador for Uganda to the Benelux countries. And I was um, in private practice before my diplomatic career started. And in Africa, working in Africa, I've had the experience that um, most of my staff, actually all of them, except the drivers, were women. And it's not because I was looking actively for women, I'm not sort of that feminist uh, type, but it is logical because the women in Africa are far more committed, I'm sorry, for the man around us, but that is the reason why I found that my 
company did and, and was thriving better with having women employed. Now, that brings me to the next aspect, which I haven't found here. And I thought it is a solution that you may have to think about. Because if women are going to do well, and my president had said it, the women in Africa are the engines of our economy. And that brings to the front that he then said, in our new constitution, uh, we need to give also political power to women. And I think we are the only country in the world whereby we have a women representative in parliament, apart from the normal rep representative in parliament. So in each district, we have one normal member, plus uh, yeah, chosen and elected by the people, plus a female representative. And I, th I think the women also need the political power to thrive. Thanks. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, this year, it's uh, 100 years ago that uh, the general right uh, to choose was given uh, to women. Uh, but still nowadays, uh, I believe it's about 30% of the members of Dutch Parliament are female, so we're not there by far. Quickly. Hi, good morning. My name is Deepti, and I'm from India. Um, so very quickly, I run a... I'm part of the government of a state called Telangana in India. It's uh, it's there. So uh, uh, one of the solutions that we actually thought of in our state is that I had a women-only incubator. It's for women entrepreneurs only. And we are actually doing three different things there. One is access to government, because there's a lot of policy and support that's already there. So we are trying to operationalize and facilitate that. I didn't hear the last sentence facilitate and operationalize the policy. Because women, a lot of times, are not aware or uh, think that it's too much of a hassle to understand everything, because they're trying to focus on the business. And for them, all the uh, procedural work, or the government work, all the registration, everything that is needed, that is um, an added burden. So we are trying to take over that and make sure that policy uh, effectiveness is actually there from the government side as well. That is number one. Second thing we are actually trying to do is what Zainab did mention, access to networks. I think uh, every entrepreneur needs an access to network, and women more so. So we are trying to create this uh, ecosystem where we bring in all the partners, mentors, VCs, everybody. And the third thing we are trying to do is, uh, when we talk about funding and asking for funding, it's a two-way street. The VCs are looking for bankable, in, um, bankable startups, and the startups are looking for investors who will invest in them. But there might be a translation issue. So we are tra trying to play the interpreter role, where we are training the entrepreneurs also to be pitch ready and be ready to pitch the investor and get the funding. So yeah, that is one small solution we do. And that's a physical space. But it's a physical space organized by the government. Uh, no, she, she's been <laughs> quickly. Thank you. This is Berak Kutsoy from Turkey, Istanbul. And um, I'm representing a family office, but we have a women entrepreneurship fund as well. We gathered 22 uh, women leaders and we invest only in female entrepreneurs. And uh, there are three solutions, I guess. Uh, since 10 years, I have been working on entrepreneurship and innovation training. Uh, since childhood, we need to encourage young female, small uh, girls since childhood. And we need to help each other more because men help each other. And we need to help each other more. And we need to uh, network, network, network. For example, I didn't know that you have a fund and you didn't know that I have a fund. So why don't we, you know, um, uh, co-invest together? Let's co-invest together. Let's bring the you know, power together. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Training, co-investment, and, um, and networking. Hi, I'm Dorothy Nida, CEO of PXD. Um, I have one word, uh, well, two, two words maybe, uh, but it's traction. So if you are an alien and you have a lot of traction, you will get a lot of investors. And so in my, in my female uh, community groups, there's two things that I hear over and over again. The first is a need for micro grants, really small amounts of funding, 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, to get an MVP, to get a prototype together. The second is technical resources, engineers. I grew up with Barbie dolls, right? I'm fortunate to have a great technical co-founder, but so many women and I, I know don't. So maybe like a, a Google hackathon or working, partnering with a large technical company where they can help you get an MVP off the ground so that you have that traction, you have that 
market validation to say people want this product. And once you have the, the, the beginnings of traction and validation, it becomes so much easier um, to raise capital. So technical resources and, and uh, micro grants. That's very helpful. Thank you very much. Hi, Ella Matalon from Israel. Um, I've been lecturing about uh, tech entrepreneurship over the last uh, 25 year years in uh, a bunch of universities. I uh, manage the MIT Enterprise Forum of Israel. I uh, chair Global Entrepreneurship Network, and I do uh, uh, I, and I make uh, angel investments. Um, it may seem trivial, but role modeling is extremely important. And uh, one of the things that we do, for instance, every year we are there for the bell ringing in the Israeli uh, Stock Exchange at the first day of the Global Entrepreneurship Week. And last year we did something we've done many times before. We held an event with, three, with eight amazing women about challenges in entrepreneurship. Not a word about gender, okay? And then men see women on stage. Now when you have a mix of men and women, somehow the women um, gets less exposure. But when it's all women, you hear them, you see them, it makes an impact. We also have another project which is called Back to the Roots, and we have women going back to their home schools, successful women, speaking to the, to the kids there, men and women, because both of us need to change. We need to change our mindsets, because we women are biased as well. And the last thing is the recognition, the admission that it's hard to be an, a successful woman. For many years, these women in Israel would not admit how hard it is to be a woman. And then I went to an event where they brought amazing women from the United States, and they spoke, they were honest, they spoke about the difficulties, and they spoke about them helping other women. And it took another 10 years until Israeli women started doing this as well. We have to admit the difficulties. Can I add to that? Actually, I went back to uh, my high school and I said, you know, we need to provide the pipeline for women in venture capital. And I said that we need to uh, organize a group that um, will show women what venture capital private equity is like. So uh, with the Chapin School, which is an all-girls school that I went to, uh, we organized a, a four or five day, uh, basically internship, mentorship. And the girls get to go to Carlisle. They get to go to KKR. Uh, yesterday, they were at Goldman Sachs. This is happening this week. And actually, my daughter is involved in that. She's mentoring them because she did it last year. And so it's very much also, as you said, it's like a pa you pass it on, right? You, you teach them. You role model. You say, look, this is an interesting area to be in, and you can do it. And a lot of these girls wrote me letters and said, I really enjoyed this this course, and I would like to pursue uh, a career in venture capital, which they hadn't even thought of before. So to your point. So I know you have to go to your next panel, so maybe you want to uh, react to some of the solutions here. You know, um, <coughs> the, the, the networks, um, I, a few of you uh, brought it up. Uh, I think that is very important, and in the Netherlands, we are working on something uh, similar. Uh, together with uh, you, for for instance, uh, bringing together female um, uh, females who are working in the funding uh, area. So that's very uh, important. Um, in my political party, um, I'm also um, starting an, a network with uh, female entrepreneurs. Uh, so uh, thank you for the comment because it, it's one of the things on my to-do list, and we all know uh, what happens with to-do lists. <laughs> Um, you're very busy, this, uh, so, so um, it, 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 uh, it's, it's lagging behind. But it, you, you inspired me to, to take it uh, up again. And, uh, and, and I will end with a personal note. Uh, seven years ago, I was um, uh, running for a leadership of my political party. And I'm a mother of five. And, yeah, five <laughs> boys. <laughs> Don't get me started. I tried to give them a stroller, but they put a truck in it. <laughs> so they didn't work, uh, but they're, they're great, of course, the best five boys in the world, you can imagine. Uh, but um, the, one of the first thing I was asked uh, is, how do you do it? And in the beginning, I, I responded by saying, well, there's another uh, uh, polit uh, politician, a man with five uh, children. You've never asked him. Um, but at a certain point, I realized that everybody wants to know 
how do you do it? So especially women want to know. So I've changed. And now I'm talking much more about it. How do I do it? So 10 minutes left. I won't get started now. But it's, 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 it's demanding. It takes a lot of energy. But one thing I always say, get a good partner, <laughs> husband, in my case, get a good man, and relax. Relax. At the end, by the time they're 18, and sitting on a, on, 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 on a bar uh, crook. What is a bar crook in English? This, one. this thing <laughs> in the cafe. They're potty trained, for sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. A big hand for our most entrepreneurial state secretary. <laughs> So we have a lot of solution. I like this new angle, which is about traction, um, about the stage and when you're not ready for VC funding, but you need to get there um, with small amounts. Um, I need, I, 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 I get the whole, you know, where do I find my team members? Where, where do you get your team members? With whom are you starting a company? Or who is your first team member? What is the solution to these specific uh, things, these small amounts and how to get a team member? Who has some more insights uh, into this? So, um, can you hear me? Um, so we, um, so, Elevate is very uh, tied in with this organization, TAI, that I run in Oregon and also chair of the global organization. So in TAI, we have a program called TAI Excel. It's a virtual accelerator. It's a five-week boot camp. And uh, we really target those entrepreneurs at a very early stage. The public agencies, again, have stepped up and the foundations have stepped up. And they provide tuition assistance to women, entrepreneurs, and, and entrepreneurs of color. And we really put them through this whole exercise. You know, if you're going to start a business, uh, you know, what do you need? You know, uh, what are the tools that you need? Uh, we teach them lean startup methodologies, um, customer validation. Then we bring in investors. You know, how do you pitch to investors? Then in, in the same sort of forum, they can meet their co-founder. So, so creating those early mentoring uh, programs like that are actually great um, you know, incubating platforms. Not only does Thai does that, we have several other forums uh, that have been created. We have a cannabis group for women in cannabis. Uh, there's uh, another organization that I can't remember. It's all about supporting women entrepreneurs, and they have a year-long curriculum. So these are the kinds of programs that, again, you know, they're all nonprofits. Um, they're really high impact because these women that come out of these programs then can go get funding. And Elevate has funded a bunch of women that graduated from those programs because we know they've been trained, they've been coached, and they're investment ready, and then we can write that 25K or 50K check to get them started. So that's the, you know, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. Thank you. So I agree that small funds are very important to um, entrepreneurs, and I would use myself as an example. In 2014, when we started Mother's Delivery Kits, we started with 30 kits and two communities. And then we got seed funding of $25,000 from USADF, United States African Development Foundation, and that moved us from, 20, from 30 kits and two communities into 346 communities and more than 500,000 kids sold. So we did not need a million dollars. We did not need 500. We did not need 200. We still don't need 500. We don't need 200. Okay, so maybe we need like 100 or 150, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that is just to tell you how small these fundings are and how impactful they are and how far-reaching they can get when we get just the small funds that we need to help us create big impact and help us reach more women and change the lives of so many people in Africa. Thanks. So, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, very good. And because afterwards I want to talk a little bit about the role of um, the uh, uh, European Investment Bank and European Investment Fund here in Europe. Because if you look at the venture landscape in Europe, uh, we don't have endowments, we don't have pension funds who go into venture or angel investment or in that stage of companies. And we have a very few family offices um, who uh, are investing in VC. So in, the, in Europe, we really need the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Fund to fund 
prevent this early stage uh, um, development uh, of uh, companies. So you, I, I'm going co coming to you afterwards, after we have a couple of other solutions you also had. Thank you, Deborah Hay, Motosol, Germany, um, American born. Um, I, I like to take action and I love your idea. And so I would call all of the women in here, instead of buying the next handbag or pair of shoes, that you put the money in a fund for women. And maybe we set a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter campaign that says skip the handbag. And each of us can basically use our, get our credit card out of our wallet and we can put the money in and he can spend it, right? I love this. Skip the handbag. I mean, okay, that's going to be the hashtag for this thing. Skip the handbag. Thank you. Uh, Heidi Lehman, entrepreneur and investor, uh, New York City. Uh, first of all, I just want to comment on traction. I think that's really important. If you're selling things, um, no matter what you do, investors are going to take notice. Um, also, just diversity networks, and this may be more New York and San Francisco than other places, but my current company got its first $500,000 from networks that focus both on women and LGBT entrepreneurs. Uh, you're also seeing funds set up for people of color, so these are happening, and they're looking for like-minded individuals with great ideas and with traction they can invest in. Another tactic that I've seen work, so there was a media company that we launched, and typically investors, it's hard to get financing sometimes for media companies. So what we did, and I've seen other women do this in particular that are launching product companies, so women tend to launch a lot of product companies, is you do a crowdfunding campaign first, and that enables you to get your product in the market, and it also shows social proof and then oftentimes investors will follow on and put money then because you've got people that want the product and you've got it in the market. Uh, one more quick thing, New York just uh, minted its first two, or, or they have had several, but recently uh, both Rent the Runway and Glossier became billion dollar companies and these were things we never thought we'd see happen from the fashion industry and from women entrepreneurs. So it's possible and it's happening pretty quickly. Very good, thank you, thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Begoña, I'm from Spain originally. I uh, certainly agree with everything that has been said, but I'm here today because my father was great to me, my partner is great to me, and I had a number of male supporting me through my career until now, and I think they should be here today. I always find that the panels are, sorry, minority men, and in the audience they're minority men, and I think we have to find a way to get them with us, for us. There were few, in my life, clearly supporting me, but there are many out there that are uh, willing to support us. They just don't know, or they have other interests, or let's work on how to get them with us. There are more. Dare to ask, I would say. Uh. Hi, I'm Jenny, um, I'm from Mexico, and I would like to learn your perspective about I'm a single mother, and I always try to help other female entrepreneurs, telling them that it's possible, that you can do it. Uh, but it's a one person impact to one person. So from the VC perspective, I've heard them say like, you know, I, I cannot go after VCs because as soon I tell them I want to get pregnant, they won't invest in me. And how do I manage having a child and running a company at the pace that they want it? So more than a solution, I wanted to know your perspective about these issues and how you are facing them in your current com countries. Uh, I'm gonna take that because actually I launched our first fund uh, with my business partner uh, we launched it and I was uh, very, very pregnant. I was uh, eight months pregnant. In fact, the day that I uh, gave birth, uh, I was actually in a meeting. And uh, <laughs> the investor was looking at me like, I think you need to go to the hospital. Would you like to take my car? Um, so that was interesting because basically I went to raise money uh, uh, when I was uh, you know, about to give birth. And I think all, our, all the investors that uh, are invested in iEurope, I think that they uh, see that it's possible because I did it. And I think that the, uh, the, the companies that we invest in uh, see that I have actually managed to do that as well. I mean, this is all about role modeling as well. Uh, one of our investments uh, called Antavo, 
the same thing happened. The co-founder is a woman, and she was pregnant while she was pitching to me, and it seemed completely normal, right? And she would bring her then baby afterwards to board meetings if her parents couldn't take care of them. Now she's on her third. She's pregnant with her third, and she just sent me a picture of that. So it is possible. You have to have the right partners. You have to have the right infrastructure. And you have to show that it's it's doable. So um, anyway, I, I, I think you need role models. And you need to figure out how, for example, mentors. I mentor young women all the time. And I show them that it's possible. And I think that's the best way to do okay, it. OK, we have 10 se seconds left. I, I want like you to talk, talk a little bit yeah. about this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So in Europe, 50% uh, of VC gets funded by the European Investment Fund, which how many people have heard of that? Yeah. So one of the issues that I have been grappling with is that because they fund so many, uh, th there's not a lot of women that I know. Uh, recently, there has been one or two funds that have gotten funded. Uh, but not a lot of women partners um, have received funding. And I think it's very important that there is a level of encouragement, a level of transparency in their numbers, which I don't see. Uh, and I think that, that that needs to change. In fact, one of the solutions I wanted to, to pose to the minister was to actually encourage them to have a woman who heads up the EIF. Because so far, it's been a very clubby type of situation. So I think that needs to change, especially in Europe. OK, with that, uh, I want to thank the panel very much for your insights, for your solutions. I want to thank the audience. Um, the solutions really came from all across the world. I heard so many countries, and there are probably even more countries uh, in this audience, and there are probably even more solutions. But I think and I hope someone made notes of all these solutions, uh, that someone can prioritize these solutions so that uh, next year or at the GES, we can show some uh, results. And uh, we will have a panel mind the gap probably next year but we will uh, be any further because there are solutions to this issue. Thank you very much.